The metaphorically, wherever you go, wherever your conscious, unconscious mind goes, it will only and always see what's already there. That means if I take you to a past life, you're going to find the current emotional problems that you currently have this lifetime. It will be metaphorically expressed in a different way. If I take you to the future, if right now I take you into your future with hypnosis, you're going to see the future from your metaphoric mind and you're going to find the exact same problems there. But if you come to see me afterwards and we change the memories, change the emotional resources, and we take you back to the womb, the womb experience will be completely different. We take you to the future, the future will be different. We take you to a past life, the past life is different. Metaphorically, the mind will express itself in its unique way and give meaning to wherever it goes metaphorically. That means when you see me, when somebody else is in this room, you will have a problem with them, not because of the person, because of your own inner resources you're now holding and carrying. Does that make sense? I will demonstrate that. Will you come up here for a second? Yeah, you. Pammy, will you turn number, number two on over there, right behind you? It won't hurt, I promise. <laughs> not much, anyway. <laughs> I mean, some people passed out because of it, but you'll be okay. <laughs> no, not there. Did you get it? This one right here, I'm sorry. Okay. Like this. Okay, now it's on. All right. All right, so this is what I'm going to do for you. All right, I'm going to give you a problem, okay? But don't worry, it's a fake problem. Okay. Okay, so this is the problem I'm going to give you. Let me make sure it's on. Say something. Hello. No. Now you can say something. Hello. All right. All right, the first one on the little one, turn it down. All right, say something. Hello. All right, good. All right, so this is the problem I'm going to give you, okay? You just landed. You landed in New Zealand. And when you stepped out, you looked over to the right, and you saw an alligator eat a bungee, okay? Now, I want you to tell me how bad it is when you saw that. A bungee. Just pay attention. Is a bungee a bird? Just, uh, just, just play with me. All right. You just got off the plane, yeah. and you looked over to the right, and you saw an alligator eat an innocent bungee. Now, how does that feel? I probably want to get back on the plane. So you, you feel like you want to get on the plane? Yeah. Uh, turn two up, that, that one up a little bit more. So, uh, so how does it feel? How does it bother you when you see that? Um, well, yeah, that wouldn't be nice. It's not nice? How do you know it's not nice? Well, because the, the bungee died. You can see that yeah. too, can't you? Yeah. Can you feel it? Yeah. Okay. That, <laughs> that poor bungee died. That poor bungee died. Let it go. That poor bungee. Let it go. That poor bungee. Take a deep breath. All right, so you got off the plane. It was a rough ride. You got off the plane. You looked over to the right, and you saw the alligator eat the bungee. Now, how does it feel when you see that? Um. Does it bother you at all? Yeah, a little bit. How do you know it bothers you? Because I feel bad for the bungee. <laughs> right. Right. So, you feel, so you feel bad for the bungee, and, and yeah. what do you think the bungee felt when it happened? Um, death. Death. Pain. Pain. Okay. Yeah. Death and pain. All that poor bungee. All, that All the bungee. death and pain. All the death and pain. Poor, poor bungee. Poor, poor bungee. Deep breath. All right. Now, again, you landed on the plane, you looked over to the right, and the poor bungee got ate by the alligator. Mm. How do you feel about that? Not as bad. Is it a little bit there? Yeah, it's a little bit. Now notice how you know. Look at the poor bungee and the alligator and notice what bothers you about it. Well, I can see like the alligator like chomping it now. Oh, <laughs> torture. Torture. All that torture. All that torture. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Deep breath. You can feel it too, can't yeah, you? Yeah, I can. To blow it out. I'm just imagining a story. This is crazy. Blow it out. Now, now is he still munching on the poor bungee? Now it's like in its throat. All right, good. Yeah. <laughs> that, that feeling. Let it go. <laughs> that poor bungee stuck in his throat. <laughs> this is serious. I know. It's, it's I just, I just worried about the bungee's children is all I'm thinking about. <laughs> all right, go ahead. All right, go ahead. Now again, you stepped out of the plane. You looked over to the right. You saw the alligator eat the bungee. How do you feel about it? pregnant with babies and maybe they don't do <laughs> they did it's so sad this is serious 
<laughs> Have you ever seen a pregnant mother being eaten by an alligator? It's horrible. <laughs> and they could be running around outside of the alligator and eager to catch them all. Deep breath. Pull it out. Now, now here's the truth of the story. A bungee is just a rubber, rubber thing that you stretch things with. All right. Now, here's the point. Did you feel those? No, I thought it was like a bird or something. But you felt it, didn't you? Emotionally, you felt yeah. the pain of it. Now, it's not even a real story. Metaphorically, it became real where? In her mind. Take a deep breath, close your eyes. And now you're a little bitty baby in the womb. You're a little bitty baby in the womb. What happens inside this womb? I'm um, playing in the water. Playing in the water, okay. All right. And you hear noises outside you. And who knows, you could have had a second one in there with you and they, they left. What would you feel then? See? See? <laughs> See? <laughs> Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> By the way, it's all made up, okay? I <laughs> but it feels real. <laughs> <laughs> it feels real. Deep breath. And you felt the emotions of it, didn't you? Now see, here's the important lesson I want to make, make here. You give meaning to wherever you go from your metaphoric mind. It takes it and gives meaning everywhere. Because I'm telling you, wherever she, we take her imaginary her emotional issues show up. Her beliefs, her structures, her ideas. I can take her to a past life and you were Cleopatra. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah, but, it was, <laughs> but then again, you can, I mean, again, we will give meaning everywhere we go. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does this demonstrate what I'm sharing with you? This is how the mind works. All right, good. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> it didn't hurt, did it? Okay, good. It's not real. It's just a rubber hose. That's all it is. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, what scares me about that is that so, so easily we can make a problem for somebody. I mean, as, as therapists, That's we can come along and create a whole new issue that they didn't even know they had. And exactly. And that's what's happening. That's exactly what's happening. Like there's therapies, all kinds of therapies out there, past life therapies, rebirthing therapies. Like, you know, they take you into a trance hypnotically, and then all of a sudden you're in the womb. And what's happening? What's going to happen is if a person feels abandoned all their life, guess what they're going to feel inside the womb? They're going to imaginary have another fetus was in there and it was accidentally aborted because the body can't carry two. Who knows? Because this is what happens. This is how beliefs are installed. And you know what? She felt those to be real, but yet it was made up. It felt real, didn't it? Because this is how the metaphoric mind does it. It creates problems. What we want to do is operate from neutrality. And we don't want to give problems to anybody. You know, there's a person that I know does rebirthing therapy. Now, she was adopted. And she is a messenger of being abandoned. And it's all because she was adopted. And then she takes people to rebirthing. And she's supporting and operating from her belief system of abandonment. Now, here's the problem. When you have a problem, you ask the question, why? Why is a bad question. <clears throat> now let me, let me say this too with faster EFT you can use rebirthing therapy you can use something here and change the individual with faster EFT because we know everything that shows up whether it's the bungee which is not real but it felt real you can change them and heal them because, again, the unconscious mind will metaphorically express what? What it holds. So you can, you can take them to hypnosis and you can take them wherever they go and in the womb you can heal that too. But what we want to do is transform what we're holding. Any, uh, all of your problems are going to show up right now. When you, see some, when you see me and I'm talking about this stuff, you could have a problem. Because why? I'm, I'm, I'm stirring up your own personal issues, your own personal attachments. Is it really me? No. It's you. Alright? So, so, oh, I was going somewhere and I pulled myself off of it. Why? Good. Now here's, here's the big problem with why. Why is usually a bad question unless you know how to change the whys. Okay? So this is what happens. Why am I so screwed up? Why do I have problems? Now why do people ask these questions? When do they normally ask it? When they're what? 
when they feel bad. So here it is. They're asking why, and you're usually asking when they're sad. So they got a minus 10 emotional intensity. They feel really bad. So what they're going to do is they're going to ask, why am I so screwed up? And they may be looking for ways to find out why they're screwed up. So they may go to a hypnotist. They may go to a rebirther. They may, they may start looking inside their head. And guess what they're going to find? They're going to find some proof. Now they're going to go back, why am I so screwed up? They'll go to a rebirther and they say, well, it's because there was a second fetus in there and they were aborted and you were left. Or they'll go to a memory where father said something to him. So father said something. And so here it is, when they go back to here, guess what they find when they get there? Emotions. So now here they are, they're feeling minus 10 with bad emotions. Or they go say, okay, now I know why. I was born, you know, I was, I was, I was pulled out breach. Or, my father said, I'm an idiot. But then you go, well, why did he say I was an idiot? You know, and then you start looking and you keep finding and you're looking for reasons to explain why you have problems. What's the problem with explaining why you have problems? It builds a life resource to keep the problem and say, I have this problem because I know how to have it. Does that make sense? Page 27. All right? Thank you, Deirdre. You know what we need like little, little etch sketches, you know? <laughs> Alright, so, so here it is. Bad problem, bad problem, pride problem. The problem with this is it creates a great excuse to have it. It creates, I have this problem, and then all of a sudden you go to somebody and you have all these past life memories and you say, well, it's just my past life. This is my destiny. This is my life choice. And then you learn how to live with it and deal with it and that's it. With Fast UFT, we do ask why. And then we go change every one of these so it's not the same and you can't have the problem. Does that make sense? Why is a bad question outside of Fast UFT? Why is a bad question if you don't change the whys into what you want? This is re-imprinting again. Okay? <clears throat> Where's my paper go? Okay. Alright. Alright, so now, as we're working all the way through this, we're working with beliefs, we're working with memories, we're working with how you... In Look at this, I've got two shots right here. Beliefs and memories. We're working with all this stuff. So, we're actually... What is a belief? When we're dealing with beliefs, what is a belief? Because, see, that's what we're working with. We're changing beliefs and we're imprinting them. A fear is a belief. Feeling like you're an idiot and a loser is a belief. Feeling bad is a hypnotic trance, which also is a belief. It's an imprint. So, what is a belief? Well, it's something you practice over and over again. It's on page 30. Something you practice over and over again, that's a belief. What is another belief? It could be a religious thing. When you think, do you have a fear? Anybody have a fear? It's okay to say if you have a fear. Anybody have a fear? Alright. All right. A fear is a belief. I believe I have this. I know this is true. A fear is a belief. So what we know with Fast T, in order to change a belief, we must operate within the beliefs system that creates the belief. So there's two basic legs that holds a belief together. The first one is proof. And the second one is what makes it seem real, which is emotions. Emotions, feelings, and sensations. It gives reality. So what happens is if we can go and address a proof, that proof is like visual proof, I do it always at one o'clock, family proof, um, who, when, and when I do it, where I do it, and changing all the sensations in the body that gives memories, beliefs, truth. It makes it real. If you, if you have a belief, like some people believe, well, smoking will kill you, but I still smoke. Because they know, they have an idea, but it's not a belief to them. They just know. It's just a, it's head knowledge. But if it was a belief, they wouldn't even stick, stick, stand close to it, won't get by it, they won't even pick it up. Until it becomes a part of their reality. Alright, so here it is. These are different beliefs. You know, so I, there's two legs that holds a belief together. What are the two? Proofs and emotions and feelings and sensation gives it a reality. By the way, when I was working, what is your name? Jade. Jade. When I was working with Jade up here, she felt 
the emotions and feelings of an imaginary problem. It was a reality to her. Now that helps us understand something. Metaphorically, our mind takes our problems everywhere and gives meaning everywhere we go. And secondly, what gives reality to a problem is the emotions and feelings. And she was making up pictures of what a bungee was. Right? And I don't even really... I mean, a bungee is like a bungee cord. You know, you strap something, hold it on your motorcycle. Y'all have bungee cords here, don't you? Yes. Now you can bungee cord, you can jump off a bridge and bounce up and down. But see, again, it's just what you thought. <laughs> see, again, where's the meaning coming from? Us, metaphorically, the metaphoric mind. Does that make sense? So there's two pieces that make a belief real, and that is the inner resources, which are the proofs, proving that it is true. The doctor said it, this said it, I feel it, I do it here, here, everybody in my family does it, and the emotions give reality to it. 